Welcome back to Katowice for live coverage of ESL1 Katowice. The first time we've brought a major to the fabulous city of Katowice and the Spodek Arena awaits the large proportion of good teams that make it all the way through to Saturday and Sunday. Uh, one of those teams will not be Na'Vi. They've been quickly dispatched from this particular tournament. And talking of speed, play faster by Vodafone. Yep, we had a moment earlier on. It might feature at the end of the day. We're not quite sure whether we might see a faster first blood, but Dendi, unfortunately, is on the receiving end of that one as well. Uh, not a good tournament for the boys in yellow, uh, but we're also going to move on very swiftly as well as we look at our second series of the day and we welcome back a couple of old pairs on the panel right now. Now, Has is back, Fogged is back, and Cap is back, which we've called the cursed panel. Dun, dun, dun. We salvaged ourselves yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. You did come yeah. back. Oh, I we think came back hard. Mean. We went 0 3 in the beginning, and then we actually, I think we. We went 0 we went 6, by the way. I wasn't on we the first zero one. Six. Oh, I also was zero not on the first one. That was there you, was, that was one common denominator. But he salvaged himself. He heavily. did. We changed that hashtag. Yeah. It was like yeah. was the not has the was not the problem. That's yeah. what we changed it to. Yeah. Um, joking aside, this is another big game. OG Mineski. Yeah. Ugh, for, for both of you, you know, if you're fans of both of them, you're players of this, like, you look at these, you go, oh, God, Mineski and Mineski, you're like, oh, God, OG, really? It's really not the ideal matchup for either team at this point, is it? No, I don't think OG would want to play Mineski either. No, they're, probably, no. it's, they're just, they're, they're random. You know, sometimes it's like, man, we just ran to Mineski and they look like the best team in the world. Well, I yeah. think like, sometimes when they get the right heroes, when they're yeah. playing like that Murana combo with the Naga Siren, they look so comfortable, they play so fast. And that's really scary as when you're a team like OG. Yep. When and they've they both, they both got cheesy stuff. Yep. They've got, both, both got broods, meepos, the huskars, and God knows what else could come out. This could be a really exciting series for us, but I don't think it'd be exciting for them or their fans. I think OG may be... Fans. Like, uh, <laughs> Maybe. I, I, I think if you look at the history of OG and the fact that, um, like, look, the core of OG has achieved so much that you could probably arguably say that they're the better team in the history of Dota, sure. right? Oh, For sure, right? They've yep. accomplished so much. But at the same time, I do think Mineski uh, matches up very well against OG in their aggression. Mm. All the I, I think that is teams. actually OG's current weakness, is yeah. that if you really take aggressive, fast lineups to them, they're just not going to be able to keep up the same yeah. pace. That's the, that's the thing, though, isn't it? As in my mind, my mind's eye, I think back of all the times OG have crashed out of a tournament, always feels like they've lost to SEA teams. Yep. Uh, yeah. And they haven't I always, mean, but, but, but you TNC remember them more, right? TNC right. is the big one, obviously, but you remember them more because it's and they have, I kind of unexpected, did, right? I think they did lose their last series to Fnatic yeah, as well. Did. So uh, they have had some troubles with SEA teams, yeah. but I, I think people are a little bit a uh, little bit too down on OG after the one game yesterday. I, I really think there are, there are three things you got to look at. Number one, Vici went on to beat Liquid. <laughs> okay, yep. they're pretty good. Yep. Uh, number two, I, I think there was a little bit of a mistake in the draft by OG. Uh, they committed to the Storm Spirit with the third overall pick, first in the second phase, and they immediately got three hard disablers taken after that in the DK, Nyx, and Sand King. And then if you look at the itemization in the game, Notel built Pipe after Radiance in a game that should have been obvious he knew he had to win by split push. Yep. So I really think you give OG a bit of a mulligan in that game. I think this is going to be very competitive today. Okay, Fogged, I'm going to ask you this. If mm -hmm. you just isolated the first 20 minutes of that game against VG yesterday, I was about and to you that showed yeah. that to someone that knows Dota, they'd go, oh, this game's done. These yeah. guys have won this easily. I think OG looked incredibly solid in those first 25 minutes, and then they made some, I would say, some crucial mistakes, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, itemization, sure, sometimes I like to pick on those two because we could have said, you know, Rezo could have gone that BKB, he went Perseverance, and then he doubled back to go for BKB. Right. So it was a little bit of item decision making that was a little weird, but it's also, there was a situation where Jarax is hitting a tier two as a Chen by, with his hero, right. and then he dies, which is like, okay, we lost our Chen, it's a mistake. And then they go ahead and die with four heroes afterwards. So it did seem like they actually just kind of crumbled and fell apart. And after that, Vici just snowballed and they got more and more comfortable as that game progressed. But yeah, for me, OG that team, great. they were not on the same page in that situation, right? Like very clearly, Jarex is like, I am giving up my life to try and get the last hit on this tower so they can't get the deny. And then it turns into like four other people dying four one deaths. by one. Like the other support instantly dies as well. Like it ends up getting caught, but again, like two supports, who really cares? But then your cores start getting caught as well. Like that was super sloppy from OG. Resolution had a bad game there as well. Honestly, like that, that was one of those games where you could have done a lot with the Storm Spirit. He got caught out numerous situations. I think even No Tail could have played the split push a little bit better. Sure. I don't know. I, that was, it was I, rough. We, we said that on the panel yesterday, but that was one of the things watching the replay last night that I don't think that, I actually think that that ended up being a pretty rough Storm game because of the triple disable. Uh, that he he just got chain stunned in so many of these fights. He had like three or four straight deaths 
in engagements where he just got disabled three times and he was dead. And maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit of that is putting off the BKB in favor of that perseverance, but I, I think that was a really hard game. I, I just where he got caught off. I also, right? it's yeah, not about, true. It's not about it's the true. like the fact that it was that's a good or bad storm game. It was the fact that he had the lead and where he got caught off was the problem. Well, he and never. The thing is, he never really had a lead. Like if you look at he, uh, they had a lead, and when they were out in front, No Tail was like 15k net worth. Rezo was actually down around 10k, basically even with the Vici cores. He he actually never really had the separation himself. And Storm, is, that's relevant to me because Storm is one of those classic snowball heroes. And okay. I, I actually got to sit next to S4 just really quick because I was sitting with them afterwards after they won their later series, and he was like, we actually just completely messed up right on build. He's like, yeah. I don't even think that Rezo should have even gone Bloodstone even after BKB. They needed damage, and we saw yeah. that happening in the game. Okay, Maneski on screen right now. The uh, opponents in this particular game, they've also played two series, uh, come through... Um, complexity uh, first. Yeah, complexity first relatively easily, but then unstuck against Virtus Pro. H how do you assess their three games they've played so far? So, I, I, again, I think with, with Mineski, the big adjustment that they've made uh, to sort of get back to that September and October form that we saw mm. was to put Mushi on these heroes that just play faster. They get into the game quickly. They're uh, Since January 1st, they're 15-3 and three when Mushi is on Tiny, OD, and Venge. They're only 20-15 and 15 when he's on any other hero. And if you look at those two games against VP last night, it was a Battle Fury Life Stealer and a Battle Fury PL. Now, the first game obviously got the fifth pick brood. You can't you can't draw too much inference from that, mm -hmm. but I think it is relevant that they went back to Mushi playing at that slower tempo. Mm. I think uh, if he's gonna play the PL or anything, he should get the get the diffusal. Play Absolutely. that fast pace, because that's where he looks like he shines. Mm -hmm. When he's actually making plays around the map and when they can play Ice Ice Size, I mean we have him on the screen too, and okay. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> right, that that may be one of the most typical TV moments in Daryl's entire career. It absolutely is. When they can when they can play fast and fast with Mushi, then it gives a lot of space to Ice 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 to do do his thing, and I think that's really crucial for this team. Yeah. Now, I mean, I was going to bring up Daryl as one of the other <laughs> crucial parts. I'm not I'm sure I should anymore. Um, it, how do you how do you look at the way he's playing right now and the kind of heroes that he's playing right now because he he's always been the maverick in this team we know that about him but how does that play into the way that they want to play i like when he's a little more greedy i think his brew is incredible but i want him to see being i want to be able to see him just take over a game and brew you, you get sacked. I mean, like you do. You get like to a try lane or something. He did that yesterday with the Timber, though. Yeah, we the we timber, put a lot of pressure on him because he kind of had to perform. It was but, almost like the one guy in the whole game now has to go off, and he did. He's but I think he's that's what is bringing up. He's the clutch right? guy. Because in the in the last game where they where they uh, pick they put Daryl on the brew, they actually picked the Timber last, they and did. it was Moon on the Timber, and it yeah. just. Daryl wasn't able to have the same impact. Daryl is one of the he's he's one of the hardest players in Dota to prepare for because the way that he plays certain heroes is just so different than anybody else. You can talk about it, you can watch the replay, but it's it's hard when you haven't faced him on that particular hero. Okay, the, the I guess the problem I have with all of this because I'm thinking about this and like what are they supposed to play like EG then? Like run aggro lanes and give. Ice I was thinking ice, more like, like CIS. What Mineski? Because we're saying that we want Nana to play faster. We Nana don't want to play aggressive. No, no. We want Mushi to also play aggressive, and then we want Daryl to play like more of the. He gets more farm, sure. right? And I think it's hard to be able to put I, more farm on your offlaner. I don't think right the now, narrative is that Unless you simple. run if that you, kind of style. I don't think the narrative. I, I am very sorry to cut you off, and and please just no, smack. Don't me. worry about it. Um, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Sorry, continue. It will not happen again. Um, look, then if you again, if you go back to like October when they looked really good, it was very contextual. They were picking they would pick three strong cores that all had favorable matchups, ideally, and who ended up getting the farm in the game was very contextual. It was who had the most favorable lane, who had the most favorable matchup. I think that was so powerful because okay, fine, if the game suits Mushi being on a farming hero, that's great. But it's very it's hard. When you tip your hand that early, when you commit to that hard farming hero for Mushi, and when he's going these very greedy builds, it's very susceptible to being punished in the meta right now. For me, either it's either they pick some Tidehunter or Brewmaster, or something that's an incredible game for that one in the third or fourth pick, or they save Isis Isis hero for last and just have him be that incredible hero that they see good versus all the cores. That's what I want to see. Not really give him like oh, we need to give him that super farm partner, just give him that like important hero. Like we see it's okay. like yeah, two like strength that. cores and they see a timber saw, bam. Or it's like um, let's say they see like two melee, like three or four melee heroes, bam, put them on an Underlord or something where he can shine on, or even a Magnus, let's say. Just yeah. one of those heroes that can just really explode and 
take advantage I like of the that. enemy. I lineup. like your description of him as like the clutch player. The clutch because, player. Because I think that's, I think right. that's important exactly. because you still like I, I don't want to lock Mushi as well as Nana into let's both of them play aggressive oh, because no. then you're bucking the entire meta of what is the current tournament in running these duo and tricore lineups. So but I, I think I'm you not have sure that if Mineski is that team that can completely buck the entire standard of like what the picks are right now and just be like, oh, we're just going to run like no core lineups and just be super aggro in everybody's faces and close games out by 35 minutes. But no, like is, one of my favorite them. sets, uh, two of my favorite sets from right? Mineski is yeah, yeah. Them. the Shadow Fiend or the Marana on Moon. Mm -hmm. I think they're very good with those two heroes. Those aren't necessarily fast, but they have that explosive potential as the game goes on. And they, they come along, they come online a little bit earlier than Mushi when he's going like a Manta and Lincolns on Medusa or Void or something like so that. So if we're going to create a comprehensive plan of like what we should be picking, it's like one and a half cores for a minute. Yes, I think yes. that's right. So I think that's right. we're not going to like no dual cores, no tri cores for them. Like other team can do that. But let's get ourselves like two aggressive cores. Let's get ourselves one kind of farmer. And whether that's Mushi or Nana or, or Ice Ice Ice, doesn't I really matter. As long as we have the aggressive setup in the first place. I, I just, I look at, I look, I always, when I'm looking at these teams, I look at the farm distributions. I look at like who is getting the big farm in their cores. And I think for Meniski, the flexibility is important. They can't have this really tight win condition where they absolutely have to have this hero get farmed. And if he gets shut down, they're out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where I, I think I thought back when they were playing, when, uh, when Jabs was roaming so well, when Ninja Boogie was drafting and roaming so well, that's what, what they were doing. They were giving themselves these lineups that they could win with a lot of different farm distributions on their cores. I want, that make sense? Yeah, I want to see, I'll be completely honest, I want to see Puck Venge. I think that is their best, to be honest. I, I, next I, to their I Naga, still want to see the Moon Murana. Next to their Naga Murana combo, I yeah. think their Puck Venge is their absolute best because they are so aggressive the way you use that coil. You Moon just commits, they do the Venge swap, and even if it's like, oh, we're at a draft disadvantage, well, you're now you're 4v5, good luck taking the fight. So I like seeing them just being able to do that. That that one I actually, I actually might rate that yeah, that one even higher than the Naga for some reason sometimes just well, because of how much they play it. Let's talk about OG though. Yes. Because obviously some adjustments that they have to make from yesterday got off to a bad start. Took care of business in the elimination series last night off stream. What do we think they need to do? Hmm. I'm trying to I, I'm trying to remember what, what they picked in the uh, last two series that they played. I can help you with this. Thank you. Yeah, so, okay, so last night was their fairly typical Tusk Gyro in the first game and uh, and E.T. Rubik in the second game, but that, it was against Effect, and Effect so was probably... They I think, had the aggressive guarding resolution carry. Yes. Right. Tinker on one, Deuce on the other. I like getting Rezo on more of a greedy hero, and I like having the supports picked up early for OG. I think actually having Fly either on this Rubik or the Switch Doctor, where he can just make plays around the map and have a heavy influence, and then having Jerax on one of his big three, either his Tux, Tusk, his Elder Titan, or his Earth Spirit. I think that, for me, is kind of the big thing. I, I actually think the supports for this team are so important, because they make so much space around the map. And I think S4, he kind of holds his own a lot of the time when he's in that off lane. I think um, Storm Spirit isn't the same carry that it used to be. Oh, With the agreed. current sustain lineups, I think you just start locking in damage, so... Um, if you are still playing around this whole concept of giving resolution the best, like, last pick hard carry that you can, um, it really has to be a game where Storm can actually get good kills, yeah. right? Because that, that was a problem with their best of one earlier, was that the fact that the Storm tier couldn't easily be able to burst down heroes, right? Like, the, the Storm, like, there are two different ways that Storm has to be good. Right, it has to be okay. You have a relatively free game, like you don't have like a whole lot of lockdown. But it also has to be the fact that you can actually get kills, because otherwise you're zipping in, attacking someone, it doesn't die. You zip out, and then you're like, well, you can't do that again. You know, right? on that, you don't on have that, that same thread, kind of damage. The big comment that that Blitz made yesterday that just like made me go, oh wow, is Blitz pointing out to me like how hard four staff can counter Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just the idea that you force that pr first person he goes on out, and he can't kill in that initial jump. Like, that's so big. After the ulti nerf quite some time ago, Storm Spirit can't necessarily make that second or third jump in the fight without running out of mind. Activation cost of yeah. all lightning is, is a big problem for him in long sustained fights. And the current meta is like a bunch of Dragonites. Uh, like, we see Gyrocopter quite a bit, but there's usually some sort of protector yep. around it. No, that was, the, that was the big problem in the Storm games that we saw yesterday. There was like one support that he could really jump on, and it was a Coddle who's going to be playing way in the back lines anyway. So he's going to have to fall over the entire enemy team to do that. There's just so many defensive defensive resources that we see, like every team. You're always going to run into Glimmer Capes. You're always going to run into Forest Staffs. And as a Storm Spirit, you can be a little slot starves. Are you going to be carrying a gem in the fights? Are you going to be carrying a dust, etc.? So 
Now we can look at these drafts. Interesting to me here that OG has chosen to take out the Disruptor rather than the Naga. You obviously are thinking about denying that combo, which a lot of the Chinese run and Mineski run, uh, but it's actually the Disruptor who OG themselves have had a lot of success with. They have first pick. Yeah. All right, Do so. you value the, the Naga more than the Disruptor or less so? I value the Naga I, I more. Value Naga more right? I value Naga more. I would rather more. have that first pick. They, yeah, but they've, it was just interesting to me because they themselves, if you look at it again since January 1st, they've actually run a lot more disruptive than they have Naga. Mm -hmm. They've only run five Naga. That, but it's been banned a lot, though, right? It has. This it is true. This is true. So we'll see. If, if, hey, if they do pick up... Uh, sorry over that. Here? I'm good. <laughs> Paul's been enjoying this over here. He's just I, I, I just, I, oh, dude, I totally... Oh, I'm, It's just like a free pass to backstage. <laughs> just I just get to listen to you guys talking about all the things that I love listening to. It's great for me. I just enjoy myself. Like, why would you not enjoy yourself? There's the night. Okay, but if they okay. Get, so we were on the right track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were on the right track. At the same time, though, if Mineski... Like, the way they left this out is that you couldn't get ET as well, right? Yeah. You can't fit ET Naga Siren into your lineup. They could do something like that. Clock plus one, clock SF. I don't know if they want to open it, per se, but you were saying you really like the Shadow Fiend. And oh, I actually, I, I like Clockwork versus Naga Siren. Yeah, me too. A, a lot of these teams are prioritizing it higher now versus Naga, because you can you can find him during the sleep, you can mess up the combo, etc. Like It's hard to oh, say kill. that my one, two, or three has to go to the back lines and find the Naga Siren. Right, but when you can get an equal net worth okay. hero to counter the Naga Siren, it feels very good. Yeah, they so still go for their Night Stalker. This yeah. is their most played hero. And this is just an SEA staple. It's weird that uh, I'm, I was looking through their drafts, and I mean, Jab's Clock was like a staple back when they were having success That's why in the fall. I but yeah. yeah, they've gone away from it. They, they haven't have. done that in a long time. But he was on fire when he was playing. I was like, wow, Jab's actually must be, might be the best clock right now. Sorry, Night Stalker okay, still does the same thing, though, right? Ago. And yeah. In that, that he can. He has the vision advantage. He can identify the Naga Siren, get the silence out. Okay, that's interesting that they come for the Shaman here shaman. because yeah. the Shaman is actually Ninja Boogie's most played. Yeah. But he's also the NS player. He's an NS player. On this team. So that's a different move from them. Well, I just. So uh, the Shaman has looked okay in this event so far. And, and I think most importantly. Um, Again, I talked about this during Genting, that you really, to be a one or two position in this meta and be successful consistently, you've got to hit towers. OD is really the only exception to that that's had success. Uh, Shaman really takes a lot of that out of the equation. I mean, he we frees saw, up. Yeah, we yesterday. saw Fnatic. We saw Fnatic yesterday. They had no tower pushers. DJ's just like, all right, first item, Aghanims, let's go. Oh, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, the Aghanims like a lot. 18 minutes. Yeah. yeah, makes up for a lot. All right, they go Witch Doctor. Yep, Fly's second most played hero. Yeah, but like in this matchup, third, I didn't sorry. go Witch Doctor. Just a safe safe laner allows the Naga Siren to run around the map. I think that's the biggest thing for me. And I think it's a, so it's a sort of anticipating Mineski's tendency to pick these really tanky cores, like the Razor, where the Witch Doctor can kind of get in, get a Maledic down on that super tanky core, and he's kind of done his job. Yeah, I like that because he does seem like this is one of the strongest here, one of the strongest heroes because of Maledict right now. With yep. the current setup, you like Rubik more against Shadow Shaman, right? Yes. Yeah, but you're susceptible to getting ran at by Night Stalker. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the thing is that the the Naga Rubik combo can just get run at in the landing phase and really be in trouble. You also, in a way, like Witch Doctor, you hit you right click really hard. Like this is also like this is more super basic, but. Riptide with a Witch Doctor hitting you in the laning phase. That actually hurts. You're, you're getting hit really hard, and it benefits with, from Death Ward too. Death Ward plus Riptide. You can actually get solo kills between your supports with these two duo. Net yeah. into Net, Net Maledict, Death Ward, someone's dead. OG's turn to ban. So Mineski, I think OG could still look to banning out the puck. I think it should still be one of the options that they go for. The Puck plus that Venge that we were talking about. Because they have Phase Shift to dodge out pretty much all the disables. He can have a pretty solid lane. Considering their lockdown. Yeah. Really easy for a Puck to play around this. Mm -hmm. And he's good versus the Naga too. Is like You can just get into the back lines. They do decide to take out the OD though. Hmm. Yeah, I actually think that, again, I think Mushi's hero pool is, is really key here. And that's with the Tiny already out, and the OD already out. Uh, I'm sorry, with the Tiny already out, I like the OD ban because that, you know, you put him on the Venge, but most of the other heroes in his pool, apart from those three, are a little bit on the slower side, tempo-wise. Sure. Yeah, okay, puck, there is a puck. Puck. It's just, puck. Yeah. I think, this, I think they're going for Puck Bench. I actually, 
It's like their bread and butter. It works really well with Night Stalker. They have the Shadow Shaman who benefits from the push too. But again, uh, you know, OG, I, I I agree with you about the Puck Bench for the record, but I think I, I, I would be shocked if OG were not explicitly prepared for that. Mm. Like, Absolutely. you know when you yeah. leave that on the table that they've got something to do with that. So you have a Night Stalker on the enemy team. Yep. There is the Lycan. I, I like Lycan a lot, and I think you can pick him right here. Um, the only the thing, thing is, is T it, it TB's still in the pool, though, right? Yes, Terrorblade is left yeah. in the pool. And TB I, is, gets, is way too good versus that hero. Yeah. I, I, I just I think Reflection is just broken right now. Yeah, Feral Impulse. You just get Feral Impulse, and you're like, okay, <laughs> thank you. So Dragonite versus Puck, a classic. Right. And it's, man, I it, okay, and again, on my list of, like, potentially broken heroes, it just... Does DK lose a lane right now? I haven't seen him lose no. lose many, no. It, it's, it's actually crazy. There have been so many lanes that I've watched. I'm like, okay, this time DK is finally going to get pressured. No. Four HP regen, three yeah. armor, level one ta level one ability. Yeah, I and, think we saw that like two value, months ago where yeah, Viper And the was value point refire. DK. Yeah, and it, I mean, that hero got so many buffs, let's yeah. be honest. Status resistance, his talents got all reworked, his breathe fire got reworked, Dragon's Blood got reworked. Everything about that hero got buffed in recent. Like, yeah, it in the, just in the it, past. it occurred to me after our panels yesterday because we were talking about Terrorblade as a core who's as that ideal core who's strong at all phases of the game, and it occurred to me how much that applies to DK right now. Yeah, he's the fourth most picked of the first two days. Bear in mind we're only in the second series of the second right. day as well. He's, he's already been four already been picked ten times. Okay, guys, so we on board with the yellow event here? You commit right now? If they want to do that, not. you don't like it. You don't like the no. Puck Venge here? I, I worry about it with the DK because of the damage issues. Not, right, remember, remember, with, okay, there you go, the, the Yolo Venge. I'm telling you, this is their best strategy, yep. I think. But it's, it, the thing is, right, we worried about that yesterday in, in the game that they played against Complexity, where their last three picks were, I believe, Puck Venge and Timbersaw, and we worried about the damage. And I think and they're gonna, they're looking to do that again. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I think OG's gonna ban Timber last. Yeah. Well, they have to, I right? think it's, I think it's just so, because that was in stone right there. That was both of their two timber pack picks yesterday were against the DK so explicitly for that landing match. I think it's either timber or it's underlord for uh, for ice 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 there. I don't know how much he's played the underlord recently. Oh, I but think I think I think OG can deal with underlord though. You think like, they can deal with it? I, I think they're they're in terms of like people talk about OG as like being a wisp team, but OG is so good against playing with it as well, and I think a lot of the uh, against it as well, and I think a lot of the same principles apply to the underlord. I'm glad Let's you see. actually showed me that list there, Paul. Because that actually could be one of the options. I think maybe <laughs> they, they, could, they, if the Timber gets banned out, yeah. they could actually look to go for that Enchantress. That's what Paul was just showing me. Okay. The Ice 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 Enchantress, then they have damage, Against right? DK. So you're not supposed yeah. to say stuff like that, Paul. No, 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 no. you, right. You're supposed to look smart. No, dude. See, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I, I'm wondering You're giving if... away TV secrets now. No. <laughs> I mean, I... Paul's got his book of, <laughs> book of magic over here. I'm wondering how sure we are that it's going to be Mineski that pull out the cheese, because I think, I think OG could pull out their own they little could. brand of cheese yeah. here with their arc ward. Yeah. It's also on my list. Mm. Right there. I, I, I think this could be a fifth pick arc ward. I game, think arc warden, arc warden. I think he can. Arc. This is the gap closer, though. The gap clo gap closers versus arc warden makes the hero really hard to play. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like the, they the eventual like spirit. The I think okay, is that's one of much the better. biggest counters to arc ward. Yeah. There's like death prophet as well. Could have taken the like before as well. Yeah. This, this is a strong. Strong. DK Lycan right yeah, here. I, like that. I mean, I like H that. these AP HP regen strength yeah. heroes is just absurd. And the funny thing is, they could have taken that Lycan third. Mm -hmm. That might have put Mineski off a little bit. So you're right, Fogged. I think I think OG were like, yeah, go on, take, take your revenge, take your revenge, Park, and then we'll mm. we'll we think we've got that figured out. Well, careful though. This isn't this the same. I, I think this is the same combo for complexity that they beat with yes, with uh, their Puck Venge yesterday. So I, yeah, I don't so know. How I, do they beat Timber Saw or Underlord? because both those heroes are going to match up well against the like. I think you ban the Timber Saw and, and take your chances with the Underlord, honestly. Pick like Batrider or something. I, I think that they're... I think Underlord is is counter... I think both heroes obviously are counterable, especially Timber Saw, but again, I think Daryl's Timber Saw is 
a level beyond his underlord. His underlord they're is good. It. They're banning it for yeah. sure. There's no way you leave it when you have DK Legend no. Corpse. I do not think Unlord is that effective of a hero compared to what Timbersaw can do. Oh, see, yeah, it's interesting. I would have gone the other way. I think I think in a vacuum that Timbersaw is garbage, but I think this. I think you have a player that runs it at such an elite level. What are we looking for here, for OG? It's a it's an S4 hero. I'm just wondering which one it could be. They could. St <laughs> I mean, the if they see was you, taken. if they think it's only the Venge carry, they could just pick a Tide, and he could just run in their yeah. faces. Yeah. Tide. I, I, so surprisingly, Tide actually Tide. just yeah. owns Puck head to head. Yes, he does. The 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 head to head stats are actually stupid in favor of Tide in that matchup. Is Tiny banned? Yeah, yeah Tiny's Tiny was banned yeah. first. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nobody's so, letting Tiny out. No. Except against Infamous, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> because they know that. And, and they're, they, oh, they the they're going to take the under. Of course, of course. The old, the old double band the strat. Double play, the double play, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we're on point for this one. Oh, nice. You can Beautiful. get like a uh, Hyper Crimson Guard either way, depending on this last bit. Yep. All right. It's cool for Mineski is that they can't aggro Trilane, give themselves a good and 1v1 matchup. This, this, this gives them a, this Puck, Puck versus Underlord is, it's it's so sad to play Puck it's versus Underlord. It's awful. And it, they have Naga set up too. So Naga, you sleep, you throw a pit down, Good luck playing Puck. Pit just ruins. Pit ruins Puck. Oh my God, Puck hates being rooted anyway. So but what's I, the option now? Now the, here's the thing, right? You don't. This can be an ice, ice, ice Puck, and you could take like probably not a Moran, maybe even a Morana here. He hasn't played it in the last three months, but he has played it, of course, in the past. Not recently though. It's what the you, what the, the moon? Oh no, no, no. Yeah. I oh yeah, ice, ice, ice. but Tinkers it's it's Daryl, man. He can play. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, is DP still available? Yeah, no, she got banned second. Well, he knows what he wants. Is this? So oh, it is the monkey king. It, wait a minute, yeah. though. Who's on the Monkey King? I, so so I is this Daryl? Yeah, Aggro Trilane, match the Monkey versus Underlord. With the Monkey King it's against the Underlord, but Darryl. the problem is on that you're still point. matching up against the high armor of the Dragonite. But it's the same thing that Complexity did against Lycan. They baited out the Lycan against EG. They picked up Monkey King as their last pick because it's so effective against that hero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just like the nice yeah. Battle Fury, one hit takes out so much. Good stuff. Uh, right, Alan. Which, which you're going to make me like? start with. I am going to uh, make you start. Just because I don't want to put anything to the curse. There is no curse. I would need you to just, you know, okay. confirm that. Um. I, I like Mineski's draft a little better. I think they execute this well. I, I just liked OG so much going into this tournament. I think I'm going to go with Mineski here. Okay. Cap. OG. OG for you and Fogged. Nice. Watch it's very it. split. I have to make the choice here, you huh? do. The, the deciding baton. I'm going to go Mineski. They've got their comfort. And I think that they can play at a really fast pace with this Monkey King, as long as he doesn't get a horrible matchup. Okay. Interesting. Very split decisions on the panel. I uh, wonder what sort of decisions are going to be made in the commentary box, talking of which. Why don't we bring them in right now uh, for this second set? Hello, guys. How Hello. you doing? Hello, Red. Not too bad. I'm looking yeah. forward to this one. Little, it, should, it should be fun, this one, it for you. It should. I mean, the Ice 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 Monkey King final pick, that's right. something a little different. Yeah, a little bit different. Always fun to watch what Daryl does. Never know what he's going to do next. Must be brilliant for you. Exactly. Now, we're going to have to I'll tell you what, our <laughs> observers are going to be really put to the test <laughs> on this are. one. So I hope, I hope Pimp's ready for this, man. Indeed. Enjoy, boys. Thank you very much, Red. So, Will, yes, this this final pick, the, the Mineski Ice 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 Monkey King. I, what, what's the reasoning behind it? I guess it's sort of the panel said you're looking for sort of that lane matchup that you're going to have the favoring in. But surely OG are going to try and make sure that doesn't happen. They don't have the best lockdown for him either. And he can play in the tree line. It's very easy for him. He's very naturally good against Pitlord, one of the best heroes one-on-one. -on -one. But this draft is almost identical to what they had earlier against Complexity. I'm pretty certain that I'm correct here that the only hero that switched is Ice Ice Ice's, where he was playing Timbersaw before. But I believe the other four heroes are the exact same. And that game, of course, that was a game where Ice 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 went absolutely off on the Timbersaw, didn't he? He had a, a pretty incredible time, and there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, dressed up as the curry at the moment, of course. As we see him stick with the team for now. Not going to see any sort of shenanigans. Sometimes we see the Monkey King try and sneak past the towers, get into the base of the enemy and see if they can get a curry or sniper. Yeah. Ice, ice, ice. He'll be sticking with sticking with the gang to start off on this. Yeah. I'm trying to find the game right now. I really want to know if I was correct here. You're pretty good. Yeah. Looking at this, what? I, 
you had the you did have the venge. Ooh. It was a, you had the venge and the puck. It was the the sort of similar two cores with it by the looks of it. Oh, I'm mixing up Fnatic's game. That's what I'm doing. No, you were kind of, you're kind of right there. No, yeah, dude. the Venge and the Puck. No, Just I was, the Venge and the Puck again. I mixed up Fnatic's game. I was half and half. I was split between two things. But it's going to be a Monkey King mid. Okay, so... I mean, as usual, I would have thought they wanted to get it against the Underlords. So why are they putting the Monkey King mid, do you think, rather than having that sort of that side lane where it would have been the 1v1 against the Underlord? I think it's the best against the DK. Puck doesn't do anything against that hero. It's the problem. Like Puck actually feels really garbage against uh, the MK. Now we'll see what OG are uh, able to do to, to punish this Monkey King. And of course, Jarax, he is going to be there to back up Resolution. And this is one of the problems, though, the mid Monkey King. This is a, a hero what with, comes into lane with zero armor. And against a Naga that's going to be coming in and spamming Riptide, it feels like the pressure is really going to be on for Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, I don't understand uh, some this decision especially because I kind of agree like if you put him one-on-one -on -one, even against like the pillar he's gonna succeed and I think OG thought that that was what was gonna happen like they put this uh, s4 pit Lord up at top thinking maybe this is a monkey King safe lane but instead the MK mid is kind of struggling because he doesn't deal well correctly with the uh, 2v1 no absolutely not the the 1v1 situations is where he he thrives and jacks Make sure not to give that to him. Yeah. He does have enough stacks, but even using that doesn't feel very good. I mean, could they not kill him here? One more root and one more riptide. Ice, ice, ice. He's just going to go down. I, As I said, I think it's going off what we said. Well, I'm not a fan of this decision to put it mid. Yeah, that's not an easy lane. And Monkey King's supposed to be a lane dominator, Owen. This is a hero that thrives on these one-on-one -on -one situations, and you want to try to give him as advantageous of a lane as possible. But Rezo's taking a lot of damage here. One more hit, the staff connects, and Rezo gonna have to pop the salve. Barely lives, 20 HP. I mean, that is the power, as we say. In a 1v1, when he's allowed to give you the rundown like that, it still could deal a, an atrocious amount of damage. But as we've seen so far, OG have not been uh, letting that 1v1 occur. Look at him, though. He's already at half health. This is not the position that uh, Ice 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 wants to be in. Because Reza will go heal, then come back, and they'll just start this all over again. Ninja Boogie will grab the Arcane Rune as he sweeps across. Of course, how are the uh, other side lanes going? It looks like no one really getting too far behind in terms of farm. And uh, S4 having a, a decent enough lane up here. Has got the uh, the Lycan beam up here as well, so both of the, the cores at the moment, actually in this top lane S4, playing a, a little on the edge there. As uh, Moon brought him, it's about one right click away from death on the Underlord. Yeah, he's going to swap lanes down here. Wants to try to be against this Venge. Feel very strong in this situation, two on two. The Lycan should be okay because of the high amount of regen. Like, all these high regen base heroes really ruin Puck. Because Puck doesn't want to get into these kind of right click wars. As in mid, once again, Jerex. Doesn't have the net quite yet, but one or two more right clicks might have done it. I'm neither way, as you said, with sort of the lack of regen the Monkey King has. It's going to be him out of the lane. Same time, Fly will get the kill on Japs. Ninja Boogie's going to TP in. It's going to have the south there for Ice Ice, so Ice 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 will be able to stick around in lane. Breathe Fire will cancel that. He's got Soul Ring now. This is when playing against Dragon Knight becomes obnoxious. And this is when uh, Jerks can also just rotate off if he wants to, because he knows that his Dragon Knight is perfectly fine now. He's done enough in the early few levels to kind of help him out. CLG down bottom, leading in there with the cast. They've got the root as well, holding jabs down, S4. Punching into the Shaman, not quite enough damage. And in fact, Fly, he's the one to suffer. Mushi chasing him down, one more touch with a wave of terror. Mushi gets the kill now, looking towards Jarex as well. Jarex will be fine, S4 there to keep Ninja Boogie off him. Ninja Boogie right now just trying to play somewhat reactive as feels like he's trying to chase Jerex around and try to match his tempo. Naga, of course, a very fast hero in that regard. And I mean, I'm watching this mid as well. I would imagine one of the ways that this sort of works out with the DK, if he does breathe fire and then the monkey goes in for the boundless strike because it's based on his attacks, the boundless strike damage is also reduced off the back of that. Yeah. Or yes or no? Yes, because yeah. it's critical it be damage. Yeah. So that kind of helps. We're seeing a few times, you know, trying to use the, the boundless to harass Rezo, but it does very little damage with the, yeah, with the high armor, of course, from the passive and the breathe fire, 25% damage reduction. Oh. 
But all in all, Ice 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 still finding very good farm in the mid lane. It's matched CS now with Resolution. And it does have a slight XP advantage as well, because Rezo did have that pairing of Jax at the start. So despite going down that first time, Ice 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 recovering very nicely. And uh, and that is, of course, because it has gone back to this 1v1. Jarex has had to look elsewhere to help the side lanes, giving the space for Ice 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 to now have that sort of edge on Rezo. Yeah, he's got the level advantage too. Yeah. That's the downside, of course, with dual laning. And they haven't gotten any additional kills or anything like that. It's a little bit scarier now, especially since there is a Night Stalker in the game. Not super comfortable. Meanwhile, up at top, no tail suffering. A little bit as the puck. Tops and CS so far in this game. Bottom lane. Quick dive in, Ninja Boogie, Mushi, and Jabs. A lot of catch between these three. Very, very tricky for S4 to come too close. So, Neski get themselves that second kill up top. Looking towards Moon. He's got the orb out, though. Will be able to jaunt to it, so gets himself out to safety. One on lane, Maneski. Amping up the pressure. They've got that Venge. They want to try and take these early objectives. And now, S4, he's TP'd back into this one. But the shackles are there. And S4, he's just giving away his life another time. Mushi takes the kill. And at the same time, OG went for a smoke. Right at the same time as Moon came across, trying to contest for the bounty rune. Broke the smoke that I'm pretty certain was meant to head mid. And this top lane decision has been very intelligent by Mineski. They've denied uh, the ability for them to do anything to this offlaner. Like, Moon is not afraid at all of a Witch Doctor like in lane. Unless he overcommits with the orb, it's nearly impossible for him to die. So he can play as aggressively as he wants on the two supports. Jarex now coming back in to assist Reza a little bit. As uh, Ice Ice Ice, he really has made the most of this lane. We, as uh, I was at least a little worried about it at the start, but he's certainly showing us that it can absolutely work out when left to be the 1v1. Yeah. Can you see Moon? Completely unafraid. He's getting into a fight right now with right. Fly. He's popping the coil. Bit for this. He's taking a lot of punches. That was. I Fly. <laughs> A little over aggressive there from Moon. Fly should still fall as Ninja Boogie will come in with the wraparound and at least get a a kill in return for losing the puck. But that is it's losing your puck. Yeah, that was a level six puck. You even saw that Fly was confused at that. He threw down the chow wheel. He said, "All right, I guess that's how that's going to work." As a four-man rotation oh, in mid. Oh, they're going in big. Fly will be teeping across. Rezo will turn with a brief fire. Does manage to get that out first. This could be pretty big, but with the magical damage, it should be enough. That's five. Mushi chasing him down. There's the boundless strike. Mushi will find the kill. And Mineski, they'll make sure that they get both of these kills out of it. That is five heroes as Jabs does end up going down. Good counter rotation to at least pick up one hero, but really like that move. Yeah. I mean, they're playing the pace that they want to. Mineski's lineup with this, this Venge, Monkey King, Dual Core. They've got a lot of strength for the moment. Yeah. I think this is Mushi's best hero with his team. Like the Vengeful Spirit. It feels like this is the one that he's most comfortable on. I really don't like it when he plays these heroes that hold that thought. Straight away. And we'll manage to get out the Wukong's command, giving that extra bit of armor as well to Ice Ice Ice. He looks to back himself up. They do get the kill on Jerex, the swap back as well. Mushi buying the space for Ice 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 to survive. Wave of Terror out onto Big Daddy, but there's no control, so Big Daddy will escape. The smart plays again from Maneski in this mid lane to limit any sort of casualties on their side and make sure that OG struggle to get the most out of their usages. As that is the Elder Dragon form popped and Resolution. We'll see if he can get any damage onto the tower, but with the way Maneski's playing, they're making sure that first ult usage of the DK is wasted. Yeah, and at bottom, no tills down here. Jabs is getting really low, but a lot of heroes being committed for this. The creep's even going to get stunned up. Look at oh. how much they protect all their heroes on the side of Maneski. This is the second time they've done that. And this is what I'm talking about when it feels like they have this vengeful spirit. They help each other at all times zone. They yes. don't allow any hero to go down for free. There is no one AFK farming on Maneski's lineup. They are... They're switching lanes like nobody's business. Sometimes it feels like when Mushi plays these heroes like PL, he gets into this farming rhythm where he completely ignores the rest of this game. But when he plays a hero like Venge, he's so active on the map as up at top, Jarek's gonna get gone on. So there's enough burst. He does have that infused raindrop, saving him from the damage from the waning rift. Still chase down there, the orb will connect. Moon does find the pick off. Very good start though for Vineski. Eight to four already. It really is there. Minus that one, that one play up at top. 
Oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll let Moon off for that. Because overall, he's he's still top net worth on the puck. Yes, so, it just yeah, could have been a lot higher. 1,300 towards having the, the Blink Dagger on top of the, the phase boots, of course, that Moon likes to go on his puck. And look at how often they move around Mushi. Going to try to set up for another kill here. Yep, they've got the slow. They've got the control. Big Daddy is dead. Another pick off of Mushi. I, I mean, if you're OG, how do you sort of react to the way that Maneski's moving around the map? It seems that they've... They've just got your number, and as we're seeing with the heroes that Maneski have, their kill potential is much higher than OG's at the moment. It feels as though Maneski are playing the way that we normally see OG used to play with. Top, Moon, one more hit. That's another solo kill for him as... It just feels like they're everywhere on the map right now. But like we were saying, OG, it feels like now, past the laning phase, they're the ones trying to counter-react to whatever Maneski's doing, but they're just a little bit too late because Maneski really, really like what they're doing here, bringing yeah. so many heroes in. And look at this, as soon as the push comes in mid, the TPs are coming for it. Nobody's allowed to die here. Ninja Boogie, even though he's just a four position, or actually he's gonna be the five in a game like this. They're gonna rotate half the map just to help him. They're even gonna get the tower up at bottom. Didn't even need to commit the wards as well. Japs have still got those ready and waiting for another push. I had 10 to four, 11 minutes in, 3K lead for Maneski. This lineup looking very hot in the laning stages. It, this team is, is playing perfectly as a unit. S4, he's got to be a bit careful here. We've seen what's happened before when the two heroes go on him. There is a swap available. Mushi can get S4 into the hands of Jabs. It could be another death. S4 coming close. Mushi sees the chance. They do swap it straight away, but the board's are down a little off the mark, and now the turnaround play being attempted. They'll get Mushi with the paralyzing cast to cancel the TP, but Fly, will he save himself with the stick charges? He won't. He will die. Jabs will look to TP out. Will he make it? He will. And in fact, S4, ooh, nearly going down to the wards there on that attempt. So a one-for-one one trade, but obviously for OG, they'll be the happy ones. They do get Mushi. They do make sure that the wards are expended not to get a tower. That was very well done overall. They needed something like that quite bad, though. They, they needed to sort of slow the tempo down a bit. They forced that they really did. hard. They were trying to go for like this cute play where they swap into the shackles, but S4... I think he's got phase boots, so he's way too quick for that. Yeah, going straight phase. Vanguard on this Underlord. Very nice uh, against these right clickers. This Monkey King Venge lineup. And still 11 for 5, 2k lead. Moon, as we've seen, he's picked up that, that Blink Dagger already. That, of course, along with the Wukong Taman, some fantastic team fight just between those two heroes with the Coil and the Monkey King out. Very hard for sort of OG to deal with. Even though they do, saying that, they do have, of course, now that level six online. The Song of the Siren is always gonna be there from Jarex if he's in the neighborhood to allow them to disengage. So we may start to see the point of the game where he started to feel, it, to feel the frustration of a team that's let Naga Siren through the lineup. That is the upside of when you play Naga is that yeah. you almost always feel comfortable about these team fights. You'll at one point have your way with a very good sleep. But Maneski, they're gonna get aggressive, take down this top tower. I'd imagine mid is the next objective for them to take. You wanna try to deny up this area. A little bit curious, by the way, that no tails up at top. When you take this mid tower, normally the next objective is for the safe laner to rotate down the bottom and then take control of this jungle. But they've actually reversed things a little bit and they're gonna make a move on him. They are, they need TPs coming in on OG if they wanna try and save no tail. You got the jump up to the trees, eyesight size so giving the vision. Hopping about, will keep himself hidden though, with Fly's TP in, and in fact, looking to TP down bottom and help them fight down here. They know that Fly TP up there to help out, so they want to try and punish OG, whilst Maneski have the numbers. The Dream Core down onto two, but here's that song. See if they can get out of this oh, one, the Boundless Strike. Indeed, it's gonna cancel them both from outside of it. S4 is in trouble here. They'll lose this Underlord resolution See if he's going to be okay. Moon trying to chase this man down with the orb. They've got ice, ice, ice closing the across the tree line. The swap back is there. Resolution will fall as well off the back of it. And in case I'm missing something, is there a reason why S4 wouldn't just dark rift out of that? Uh, I think he thought at least his Dragonite was okay, but... Because they tried to TP. Yes, but Jerex was just outside the range of the Venge, who managed to just stun up the DK as he was TPing out. So he thought to himself, like, oh, at least my, my DK's out, it'll be okay. Then once his DK gets stunned up, I think his plan changed, and then at that point, the Dark Rift was, was too, way too late. Yeah, I guess he would have had to go 
put it straight up. And, and we're seeing another thing as well, of course, outside of the range of the song, the boundless strike. It's going to be very nice to stop in these TP plays. It's very easy for Isosize to reach in with that stun. And you realize, like, the reads on Mineski are so good. We, we talked about how they're going to take this mid tower next. They do so after they take the top one. And they realize that OG's going for the same play. I had just said, I don't know why the Lycan's up at top, because they often want to take that bottom tower next. When OG make that rotation, Mineski are ready. And mid, once again, it feels as though right now they're everywhere on the map. The TP rotations, they're not wasting anything so far. Let's see if Notel can find anything. He's going to pop the ult, try and go for a chase down. Mineski backing off. And already there's backup here. This is a bit of a risky place for Notel to be. Same time down bottom, Rezo caught in the Wukong's command. Isosize has already used the Boundless Strike, so not quite enough damage on his own at the moment to take down the Dragon Knight with the high amounts of armor that Resolution does have. Battle Fury, of course, still not quite there for Ice Ice. But again, once again, he makes that sort of play, keeps himself hidden in the trees. Rezo and No Tail with S4's backup will move down here to attempt for the push. Ice 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 just sort of toying with them from the sidelines, from those trees with the Boundless Strike, trying to put a bit of a stop to that push. And top lane, you've got Moon continuing the pressure up here as well. Jarax, looking for setup though, buying time for Flight to come in. And with the Death Ward knocked down, that's enough. Moon will get punished for coming out. Yeah. And at the same time, Mineski, they're going to wait on this high ground. Go for Jarax. If they can get the Hex off first, the Shrine is popped. Is the damage there? Should be just enough. So if they can get out though. Fly, S4, has the root down onto Jabs. Jabs being chased. They have the Cask again to buy time for them to close the gap around him. Still just doing his best to sort of run about, and in fact, they might not even get him here. If he can keep himself outside of the fog, he's going to be fine. Jabs will live. He gets away. Oh, and at the same time, that's a big kill to find. Look at this. They've found no tail. Ice 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 and Ninja Boogie surrounding in the Boundless Strike, built up with the Jingu Mastery as they cut down the Lycan once again. And we're now at a point where all three highest cores on the map are all those of Mineski. 16 to 6, 16 minutes in, 5k gold lead. These guys are playing fantastic. Top lane, Jarax, he's, he's looking for asleep. Mushi, but Mushi, he's out of range of the sleep. He's just going to walk away from it or will get clipped on the side of it. They do have a route, but immediately goes for the TP. Knows there's nothing else there to cancel it. And again, a song used to no avail. And of course, those early levels of song, meaning it's on that very long cooldown, over two minutes, where Mineski don't have to worry about the song breaking up their plays. Yeah, and look at bottom lane. They've already rotated for that. These guys are playing so incredibly fast. Yeah. We've got the Battle Fury on Monkey King now. Any move that Mineski makes, or when they get gone on, they're already making another play. Their Vengeful Spirit gets gone on up at the top. They're going to punish that by taking the bottom tier two. That fight up at the top, they're already making the move on a resolution. They get the kill onto Jerex as well. They're playing so much faster than OG is. And it just feels like OG's not ready for this kind of pace. No, their lineup just does not seem suited to deal with it at the moment. They are struggling for sure against the, the power of Mineski. I don't even know if it's a lineup issue. I think that Mineski are flat out just playing really, really good right now. This is why I prefer Mushi on these heroes rather than these Phantom Lancers, because yeah. when he plays these Vengeful Spirits, he's creating so much space for the rest of his team. It feels like um, an improved version of what Fnatic are trying to accomplish with what Envy's doing, where he's yeah. moving around the map. I think I think it's sort of, as you say, you know, if you put him on a farmer, it's just sort of, it feels like sort of wasted talent. You yes. know, it, you're not using Mushi to his full potential when he's sort of AFK hitting creeps. Because the thing about his lineup is Moon and Ice Ice Ice, like we have a term for they're killers. They do not like hitting creeps. If you think about all of Moon's best heroes, this Marana, this Puck, he wants to be as active as possible. Same with Ice Ice Ice. If you think of Daryl, you think of fighters. And that's why the Vengeful Spirit synergizes as well, because now you have four or five heroes that are just willing to get an engagement on stop. Nice coil. He does get it down onto two. Has he got the backup? Ice, ice, ice. Looking for the perfect position. Will drop the Wukong's command in from the tree line. Manages to get it, so all four heroes of OG are having to be forced to run through it. No tell. Trying to lead forward. Will manage to get the kill on the Shaman with the minions. Ice, ice, ice sort of trapped here. Will jump himself back up to the trees. They've got the Dragon Tail stun. stun. Onto Moon at the side. This is good for OG. Two so far. The root out onto Ninja Boogie as he will tick down across the tree line. Mushi just left to run away, and Ice 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 left to hide. They're going to go into Roche. That was a huge fight for OG. Definitely what helped out there was the fact that S4 comes in. He has the completed Crimson Guard. Helps negate a lot of the damage from Mineski in these fights. And they're going to make this move in. Three heroes get caught out. They're low on OG. They get the stun, though. They cut the tree down as well. That's a long time for Ice 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 to be stunned, but Mushi with the swap out keeps Ice 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 safe. The swap into Shadowblade. 
They'll move back in, boundless strike down onto No Tail. Mineski trying their best to force OG back out the pit. They'll get the magic missile down onto the Naga Cyrax. Jarex is gone. The pit of malice onto two. The brief fire burning moon down low. They'll lose the puck. Jabs now being focused as well by OG. He's been stunned up, surrounded. Jabs down as well. Moon there effectively dying back into that situation. With OG getting those two kills, they'll go back in the pit. Can Mineski bet get back in? You bet that they're going to try. They've got the Monkey King. They have to do it soon, though. Roche is falling low, but again, no Tail just walks up, cuts the tree. The Man Ice 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 was looking to jump on. The Death Ward's down. We'll get cancelled by the Boundless Strike. But Ice 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 is going to take down low to the Maladic. They're oh, back into the pit, OG. And he does. Ice 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 is gone. But Moose, oh, Moose, he, he, he got both. He got in, he got the kill, and he got the Aegis. They will make it pay. They'll kill him the once. But Mushi actually being able to take both factors of that Roshan away from him, as he will still die. That was... But he, he got the kill, he got the Aegis. That, that's a hashtag worth. That was like an eight minute fight. It just kept going. <laughs> yeah. Heroes just kept buying back. And Mineski, they take their first sloppy fight of the game around that Roshan pit. Yeah. Pit Lord reigns supreme. Absolutely, yeah. So much stuff that S4 got done there. The damage, the control, the sort of the stacks building up and and no tell as well with the sort of the fortitude as we saw going outside of the pit, knowing Ice 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 was coming back and just chopping down those trees like nobody's business. I think he caught him out at least twice with the Quelling Blade play. Yeah. That was such an awkward fight for Mineski. Even the one in the jungle, it felt like that was very forced. They felt like they had to take that play and I don't think they necessarily had to. At some point, you can just pop nighttime. You'll get a Roshan for yourself. It'll be okay. You can play a little bit more patient. And even with all of that, with Moon buying back, they're still in a okay-ish gold lead. They've still got the slight lead. Yes. And as a, it's always big, to, especially when it's a, like a DK lineup, like, like, like a lineup, to take away the, them having the ages. Because suddenly, they're sort of put on a back burner where they can't really force objectives like they would want to. Yeah. But at the same time, we talked about how they're all killers in this game. That time they got way too overaggressive. They thought they were a lot further ahead than they are, so they took a sloppy fight. They figured, okay, well, we'll just win this fight anyways. But OG, nobody went down during that Crimson Guard timing. No. Moon had a very aggressive orb forward, just got caught out by himself. And then they just started dying one by one. I'm an Esky. They are not put off. They still want to fight. They still can look for a fight, they just have to set it up better than they have. Because there are a lot of tanky heroes now on the side of OG. Like, once that Crimson Guard finished, I undervalued that item like crazy. The fight was so complicated for them at that point. Is no Tail gonna pop the ulti? Running forward now. Yeah, it's looking for Mushi. Quick Dream Call from Moon. Holding back the ball temporarily, but no Tail, he just continues chasing down this vengeful spirit. Quick swap from Mushi, creating some distance, but Jarex is there with the cut around, has the net. He'll even hold the kill there for S4 to take. So OG again getting two. These moves from Maneski being punished. Ice 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 and Ninja Boogie will Ice, Ice, try Ice. up top, but the song's there straight away from Jerax. They may have stepped in a little too far here despite having two alive. Ice 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 and Ninja Boogie attempted for the play, but the song from Jerax buys the time for them to surround and kill Ice Ice Ice. I'm not sure what that play was up at the top. They knew that the entire force of OG was moving forward, but they still made an aggressive play under the tower to kill a Witch Doctor. I think the rationale was, well, we can just get this kill, get out immediately, it'll take two seconds, no no time investment whatsoever. But it's we'll the We'll see it again here. Oh, this is back of the, the... So we'll see Mushi get the kill onto Roshan. Oh, this was sick. So what, he swaps himself in, bam, takes the hit, takes the ages. It was it was a very nice play, but as we're saying, overall, was sort of a, a bit of the, the silver lining to a, a bit of a dark cloud regarding that last few team fights that Maneski have got themselves into. Because now you've just allowed this Lycan back into this game. He's so strong. He gets on top of your Vengeful Spirit. You can't do much. And once again, is this just going to be another hero dead? Into your hammer. Holding him down. Ninja Boogie's gone. Now with the Rod as well, picked up by S4. Nah. They've got the setup onto the Shaman here as OG move from hero to hero. Maneski, I th they're not even done. Look at Notel. He's heading straight up underneath the tier threes. They're just destroying Maneski as this game has just absolutely flipped on his head. And I think we're seeing sort of the, the strengths and weaknesses of Maneski's playstyle. They love to fight when it's going great. It goes fantastic. But when it goes bad, it just feels like the game's over. Yeah, I, I think it's just done now. They're going to get racks minimum here. And this is so confusing. They literally just went in, died one by one. And this is that. how they're going to lose. This was a cliff. And it just fell straight down. There was no breaks on that train. 
At 24 minutes, the team that I did not think was going to get racks got racks. Sunny F, 5k lead for OG. They've oh, got a BKB well. now on Rezo. They're going to be so tanky. I mean, we've. this is sort of what the, the second time I feel we've seen this from OG already at this time. You know, that, that game the other day a, a, against Vici Gaming. Well, that one was sort of the other way around. Yeah, it's flipped. It seemed, it's flipped. They've sort of, you know, they've read the situation that the, they were able to put Vici, Vici where I was with them in, the, in that game, and they've, they've, they're doing it themselves this time. They're saying, it's all right, if we lose the laning stage and we sort of have, lose these early fights, we can we can get back from that. Yeah. They, uh, they're doing what Vici Gaming did to them. I mean, Mineski, this is a really disappointing way to lose this lead. It feels like they haven't taken a proper fight since. When they were winning, it felt like they were consistently taking these very intelligent five, five man engagements. And now it feels flipped. It feels like OG are the ones constantly grouping up in force, getting a little bit faster to the goal line. And OG just picking them apart now. Mineski, that was the weirdest engagement in mid. They lost hero after hero after. They lost four heroes in a row trying to save each other. It just felt like a Congo line of death. And you can see sort of the amendments being made as well. You know, Ice 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 was wanting the SLY, but now he's just going for the Ashen to BKB and roll. Bottom lane, they have the song. Needs your hammer timing. Bam, frame perfect. No chance for Puck to do anything in reaction. And Moon is gone. Minute without the Puck. I think it's been something absurd. Like, it's been a lot of kills in a row now for OG. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, if you look at that. There has sort of condensed red dots. The last time they got a kill was like around the 20 minute mark. It's just been like six minutes straight of Maneski getting killed. Ah, I mean, the, I the, the Vodafone tag was hashtag play faster, not feed faster. It's not going great for Maneski. And it's so disappointing because of how well they played in the early mid game. They were playing so selflessly. Like this should not be understated. They were playing very well around they each were, other. The start looked absolutely, the, the movements as you said were pretty flawless from Maneski off the back of the lanes. Yeah. And then that weird Roshan decision where they ran in one by one. It feels like the last two engagements I've just seen Maneski players run in one by one trying to save each other. And sometimes I mean, it works when you're all together. But when you're actually just running in a single hero after a Radiant single hero, then it becomes impossible. There's such a strength in numbers in this game. Bottom lane, OG, setting up in case anyone dare come out on the side. We got S4, rifting the rest of the boys in. As OG grouped up as a unit down bottom, Rezo already searching that tree line, see if we'll find things out. Darkness will be popped by Maneski. They're gonna literally try and take this fight. They popped down the dream call and silence the three, but the Crimson Guard and BKP's out. Resolution trying to turn towards Ice Ice Ice. Ice 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 has that BKP done with the Wukong's command, doing a good job of bringing down No Tail, and he'll get it. That's the Lycan down. Jarex moves in to go for the net, has to force himself away, but he'll also fall. Maneski fight back. They hold the tower. They get two kills. They only lose the Shaman. They're gonna get three. Ice, 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 indeed, slowly but surely chasing down a fly. He'll try and turn with that Death Ward, but the boundless strike from Ice, Ice, Ice What's too much. So they are able to hold that defense. Yeah. Again, maybe this time around, maybe OG getting a little ahead of them. So I thought that they might back up as soon as the darkness was popped, yes. but they seemed like they wanted to stay and force it. And the weird decision there is they didn't have the Naga Sleep. It was about 12 seconds away. If they were a little bit more patient, you can make that move. Because surely you see, you, you see the darkness and you're like, they want to do something yeah. here. Do we really want to do this, guys? Guys, I, I think at that moment you just say, back up, we'll wait for the Naga sleep because that's your reset. This is the, oh shit, we messed up button. You need that in these kinds of engagements because when everything gets popped, if you can just Naga sleep, people walk away, reset the fight, then you'll get it on your own terms. You can wait out a lot of these on cooldowns. But credit to Mineski. They, that was a very nice play, what they did. They did the... Uh, the Axe Puck coil into the swap onto the Lycan, which immediately killed him. Yeah. And, and you know, we saw as well, sort of in that, Rezo tried to turn his attention towards Ice Ice Ice, but when he has the BKB and the plus 20 armor from the Wukong's command, this is not an easy target to kill. You, the Ice 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 is going to be able to survive in the midst of that circle at the moment. You just don't have the damage to take the monkey out. And both teams, I mean, this is kind of a gritty game. It feels as though they're not playing at their 100%, but in games like this, it's always a little bit awkward. It's when you sort of like lose your tempo. Like both, one team feels like they're so far ahead that they can just go ahead without uh, most of their massive abilities. And 
Interesting build. So Ice 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 focusing purely on sort of his main hero's right click. He's got the butterfly queued up. I mean, evasion is certainly going to be key in this matchup where neither of the cores really want to be building MKB or Bloodthorn. So, I mean, and, and that, once he has evasion as well, then there, there really is very, very few chances of them killing him in his Wukong's command. They have such a sick combo, though, the swap into the Axe Coil. Oh, They've yeah. got to be really careful about that on the side of uh, OG because there's no BKB on this Lycan. He gets popped quite quickly during that time. I mean, I, I feel like I've seen the Venge Puck combo get through more drafts than I feel it should because I feel like some teams maybe even understate how good it is because it literally can just end the game. That sort of catch and lockdown is very hard to play against if you're not used to it. Yeah, it's 500 damage and a full three second stun. Yeah, through BKB. Yes, it's absurd. Actually, with the Scepter, it's 4.5 seconds and 700 yeah. damage. That Whilst is. also screwing up the rest of the team that you've caught in the coil. It just, it, it seems too good. And teams that are good with it, like Maneski, are getting the chance to do so. This is one of the ways to deal with it, though. Jump straight onto the puck, but there's the swap. No, Mushi will save the puck. Ice 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 has the Wukong's command down. Moon, he's going to try and jump back, but Jerex will be able to finish him. So they lose Moon. They've got the rune onto Maneski. OG fighting in hard. They're still using that strength, that lead that they've managed to mount against Maneski as they find three. They'll turn towards Ninja Boogie's you hammer. TP out, but the hammer indeed from Jerex comes through, cancelling the TP. They'll lose four, there'll be a buyback on Moon, but there's three heroes down, Will, and they don't have buyback. I think this might just be the game. Moon buys back in a desperation attempt, trying to shove out the waves, but... I think again, OG realized. Yeah, this it was just the team who formed up his five faster. OG taking advantage of that. And it looked a little bit dicey when they lost that engagement at bottom, but this time around, they waited for the sleep. They had all their major abilities up. They were the team on the offensive this time around. And look, just helping it clean up the game. Song into the hammer. Timing, of course. Perfect. That's Moon gone. Ice 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 is going to jump in. He's got the BKB. Can he really do anything against this? He's got the four-man boundless strike. He has some of the right click for the Jingo Mastery, but it's not enough. They move into the base. They'll swap, they've got the Hex onto West 4, but the H in it's falling. GG is called, ladies and gentlemen, OG taking your game one here. And what was, I think as you said, well, it felt like a, maybe a little bit of a warm up for both of these teams. There were some questionable plays from both sides. Yeah, I think especially for Mineski, they're gonna be disappointed in this loss because for 20 straight minutes, they absolutely own this game. And then for the next six, they got just obliterated. They started dying one, on one, one by one. It felt like they weren't able to slow the momentum at any point. And it was awkward. It and for a second, was. it looked like it was going to go the other way, where OG took a disastrous fight. I mean, they don't look super happy about this game, and as well they should, because that was a disappointing loss. Absolutely. I think you can see it there on the faces of Mineski. They know that they messed up at that certain point, and that's also the refreshing thing, because we know coming into game two, we can be guaranteed to see both these teams step up their performance. Yeah. This is a very close series. Like, that was a very close game. Absolutely. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Game one of this best of three going to OG. Thanks very much, Odie Pixel, for the commentary in game number one. Of course, we'll go back to our commentators for game number two. A fairly breathless kind of game, but also a bit messy in places as well. Let's find out what our panel made of that one. Fog, we'll start with you. Could have gone either way, couldn't it? They were, Minescu was looking great. They were doing everything they needed to do in the early game. The laning phase up to like that 20, 20, what that? I'll just 20 say 20 till 25. Like pretty pretty much that because we got a bit worried, didn't we? 20 minutes, we're like, oh, are OG a 20 minute team? And then they just rode all the way. Oh, I yeah, got the numbers for you guys. It's 18 Let's minutes see. in. It was 18. Ahead, 16 to 6, and 7K net worth. And it's just, ever since that, that Roche fight happens, and it was like Mineski couldn't do anything right the rest of the game. I was watching it, and I was like, okay, they're doing so much damage in the fights. And then I see S4 purchases Crimson Guard. And the oh, fights actually insane. just completely turned around right after that point. And then, to be honest, Mineski, they did have those kind of, I mean, I'll call it chain feats, because that's what you can, like, in essence, you can call it. They yeah. won by one deaths. They had it in top. They lost two heroes. Then they went top again. They went aggressive. They got slept, lost another two. And then it was around that, uh, the ancient, uh, around the ancient area. They lost four heroes again. So it was, like, several situations where they gave up a bunch of kills. But, yeah, as far as Crimson Guard really made the difference in this one for me. I think that was, um, I think this is the biggest difference between the first game where we saw Mineski pick up a Timbersaw and say, Timbersaw has to carry this game, single core basically. And this game where it's a similar thing where it's like, okay, this is Monkey King, he has to win us the game. Is that I feel like the Monkey King was harder countered than the Timbersaw. 
We agreed it was a good Timbersaw game, and he was just had to go off, and he had to snowball really hard. Here, the Monkey King does have to go off, but he's still countered because you still have the fact Crimson Guard is a pickup for the Underlord. You have it, uh, a like tanky heroes in general, like the high armor of the Dragonite, which is quite good against him. You have some decent single target, and at the end of the day, he's an ultimate dependent hero. So he's countered by the Naga Siren. This was the one by one dust that I was talking about, where they just lost two of their, they lost their Venge, they lost their Shadow Shaman, and then they go for this dive onto a support hero, too. It, it was just like they were mentally out of the game. And it, it yeah. got, and what, both during the game, looking at the numbers and looking at these plays, I'm struck by how much this was a mirror image of the game that they lost to VG Gaming yesterday. The, they lost that game, they had a nice landing phase, uh, the itemization decisions were suspect, their positioning around the map was not great. In this game, the itemization is perfect, exact going opposite. for that, prim, yeah. that Crimson Guard, and it was Mineski who really seemed like they lost their composure. We talked about yesterday how important Naga is, maybe the best hero right now at fighting around the Roche Pit, that really was what key got OG back into this game. Mm. Yeah, disappointing from Mineski as well. I... <laughs> Kind of expecting more from them after yesterday, weren't we? Again, I, yes, think, you, I no. think it's... I mean, I think OG is still a really good team. Yeah, I think they yeah. match up fairly well. I think, you know, I, I'm not going to hate on Maneski for this performance right. because at the end of the day, the game got really messy for them, but it was a hard game. Um, it in, in, the, in the regard to the fact that you felt pressure, right? Like, they, they definitely screwed up quite a bit, but it was one of those games where you had to kind of play pretty well for yourself. Um, you had to keep that high performance to be able to close out the game mm. uh, because you're relying on a, on a single core, which leads to um, the, the next discussion that I want to have, which comes oh. back to... I'm not trying to make an argument, Alan. No, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> uh, I'll preface this real quickly. No, I'm... No, I'm no, uh, so go ahead, go it ahead. goes back to the discussion when we were talking about the um, the concept of Mineski and how you they do. play. Yeah. And the we were talking about like speeding up their cores and everything. Yes. And can okay. you do that in this meta and that sort of thing, right? Is the question for me is like I I personally went against the timber saw because I don't believe in that single core. Not yeah. for this patch. And I'm I'm gonna go against it for this game as well, because I don't believe in the single core. Even though it's Mineski's style, right? I don't believe in it. So the question for me is for the panel is like, do you which way do you go? Like as a team, do you believe in yourself and do you believe in your play style? enough to continue this despite the fact that it is probably not good for the patch or do you diversify and, I'm, and it's not going to be like it's not a like oh i don't believe in myself and that sort of thing it's also about like diversifying your your strategies and being able to employ what some of the best teams are doing so it's not like trying to copycat necessarily but it's also just recognizing what's good and bad in this patch i like ask you this though is, it, is that is it is this the right time to do it in the middle of a tournament? <laughs> Shouldn't you be doing that beforehand? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, of course, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying talked like, over and over. now. Well, <laughs> you can, you can two, talk about stress all along, man. I've got a good you got to bring it in land. I've got a pretty good answer. So for me, for a long time, even from playing and watching all these teams, I always would look at single core drafts and I'd be like, yeah, they're a bit underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Until I saw wings. And yeah, that kind of changed, was a long that time changed ago, everything though. for me. It was, but they changed everything for me because I saw them take a 75-minute game with an OD Timbersaw core, no yep. building hitters, and I was just like, this is unbelievable. This just changed the whole way that I'm thinking about Dota. Were you ever yeah, on a team that. in that situation where you felt like this is how we want to play and like this is how everybody else is playing and it's kind of working for them? Yeah. Like, and I think how, that, how did you make that decision? I, I just think if if you're a team that's so comfortable that around that play start, around that play style and it's when you've played your best and when you've won tournaments, Mineski have won, minor, won a minor with this too, I, I think that's just, it, you like, can't change now. Yeah. The, that's the, my, I mean, the my biggest... Biggest... Back to them then. Yeah. Can I can I get in on this just at the tail end? Sure. Really briefly, the, the biggest thing to me is uh, I think you can win with single core strategies, but I think that they have very, very little margin for error. I think that's the common Agreed. denominator in a lot of what you see with Mineski is when they pick those lineups, they, they have the one bad fight and it feels like it just sets them so far back. 